John, welcome. And do you want to start walking people through how to set the stairs on the fastball? Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about setting stairs. Uh, we're here in our training center here in Minnesota at Park Industry, so we'll be on the newest place and greatest fast back too. Um, but the stair settings are for both the fast back one and the fast back two. So even though this screen may look different for you if you're a fast back one owner, you still would hit the stair button. So what we're going to talk about today is what a stair means. So that just means when are the symbols going to come up and when are they going to go down. So both your fast back one and your fast back two are going to go off of these crosses. So the number one roller, when that compresses, it will trip this cross and tells the machine that the stone is present. Then when the stone reaches the fourth box, it tells you that the stone is still in there and then we're measuring the length of the stone so that the spindles know when to go down. Okay? <coughs> so as you can see, this is what we have our stagger setting for for this type of tooling that we have on the Fastback 2. So let's just talk about engage for a second. When you hit cycle start, spindle 1 is going to come up and that's for a Fastback 1 or a Fastback 2. The difference is on the Fastback 2 we added the disengage feature so it's not up the entire time. So if you want to know what negative 2 means, we're just going to hit the help button and then we're going to hit engage. So it gives you a picture of a tool and basically what this is saying is when the machine thinks stone is present, there's a switch length on there and this pad's going to come up basically when the leading edge of the stone is right at the edge of the pad. Okay? And that's okay, we do that for our first three or four spindles. Now if you're working with a more brittle stone, you might want to kick that back so that the, the leading edge of the stone is more over the center of the tool so we don't risk breaking that edge of the stone. So we'll go back to our stagger settings. And again, you can see we got negative two for the first three. Then we're going more in the middle. We had negative two again, and then we're not engaging it until we're more to the center of the stone on our more polished pieces, okay? And again, all you have to do to make this change is you can just touch that box and you can hit 1.5 and then you'd hit the negative button, okay? Then you hit enter and that has a save. I also talk about this a little bit. You have your stagger set names. So if you have that more brittle piece that you set these staggers to come up more towards the middle, you could just name it that, you know, Taj Mahal, right? So every time you do a Taj Mahal, you can select that. Now we're going to talk about the disengage. So like I said, the stone knows that the material is present between uh, prox 1 and prox 2, it measured that distance then, so now it knows the length of the stone. So basically it's the same, same thing here. We'll hit help, we'll do disengage. So basically, when is that spindle going to pop down? So we're going to go back to our stagger settings. This one, when it's plus 3, it's going to disengage, it's plus 1. So again, we're talking about stagger settings and then maybe troubleshooting some of the staggers. So let's say you piece goes through and you got swirl marks on the leading edge. You know, you might, if you had this set at like a, a one or something, you might want to make it more negative so that spindle comes up sooner. Now I will also tell you though, it's common to see swirl marks on the leading and trailing edge. And sometimes it is your stagger setting, but sometimes it's also your blade leaving a mark in there. So it might be time to square up your arbor and make sure you're not zinging through when you come out of that stone. Very good, Sean. Um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about the tooling we use on the fast back? And kind of maybe it's what you do when you're looking at your tooling or changing tooling, things like that. So right when we came over with the fast back two, you know, two, three years ago, it seemed very popular with the gray and white ports. We were struggling to get a decent polish on that stuff. So what you guys were having to do is basically have a, a quartz set of pads and then a natural stone set of pads. So what we've gone to, is this velcro based tooling. It's a lot like what you're using in your shop for hand fab, your two polishes are using there. Um, and we found that this basically works for everything. And um, so what's nice about that is this is what comes on your fast back too. It's a velcro pad like that. So when it's time to change the pads, you just lift them up and then you just stick them right down in place. Hey Sean, what options does the fast track want to have if they want to go to this? Yep, and that is a good segue into the the tooling maintenance, if you will. So let's say you're a Fastback 1 owner and you want to try this, this Fastback 2 pad. So we would send you a kit. It would come with pads 1 through 7. The chamfers are the same between a Fastback 1 and 2. And then these actually lock into your snail lock. So the kit would come with all new of these tools that go in the snail lock. So let's talk about removing uh, the snail lock in the tool. So 
Every machine will come with these two wrenches, whether you're Fastback 1 or Fastback 2, when they come in your parts box, if you lose them, we always have them here, we can send them to you. Um, so basically, each spindle has a dust cover in it. It's got four holes, two holes have set screws locking that dust cover on the spindle shelf. Two of the holes are open for this notch to go into. So what I would do is I would just feel down here with my hand, find that hole in the dust cover, and lock my wrench in place. You can see I have it locked in place there. If you put it in a hole with a set screw, like that notch is going to go in there, but it's immediately going to fall out. That's how you'll know if you're in the right spot or not. So then basically I'm going to rotate this until I hit the next spindle inside the carriage there. I'm going to grab my thin spanner wrench here. There's four spots on the snail lock that have wrench flats. I'm going to place that there. If you're a fastback one guy where you haven't changed your snail locks for a while, I usually grab a hammer and I give it a good whack and then this comes loose and then you can remove it. Some of you guys, uh, some of the tooling I've seen on the field, um, wrenches come with your tooling so you can unlock this, but this is the snail lock on every machine, so you would be reusing this if you upgrade to our new style tooling. It's this piece that you're actually getting, and then the Velcro pads again. Hey Sean, do you want to demo how to do that? I grabbed a spindle, dust cover, and a snail lock on the inventory, maybe a, maybe a little bit more out here. So what we have here is our fastback to spindle. So again, here's that dust cover. And as you can see, we don't have the set screws in place, but there would be set screws here where if you put this wrench in there, it would maybe go like that far and fall out on you. If you rotate it this way, you can see that this wrench will fit in there. So again, then I would rotate till it hit the next tool. And if you're changing out the number one spindle, you would rotate it till it hits the wall of the machine. And then as you can see, I would lock on my snail lock there and I would pop this loose. So if we're talking about spindle maintenance, if you're a fastback two owner where you're thinking, you know, all I gotta do is take the Velcro pad off and then I'm good. I would recommend every time you're taking off your Velcro pads and changing them off, that you take this snail lock off and then add, add anti-seize to the shell. So if you ever do change tooling where you go to something else, maybe that's not the Velcro pads, you go to an actual pad that locks in the snail lock, you're not damaging the snail lock trying to get it off. Very good. Well, thank you, Sean. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for joining us for the tip of the week. In the comments, ask questions. Please do. We would love to answer them. But also, if you have any recommended tips you would like to see, put them in there. We want to do the video snippets that you want to see. So thank you for your time. Have a great afternoon, and we look forward to seeing you next week.